Hey everybody, it's Phoenix Talon. Did you want a fast way to get honey and honeycomb? Well, I don't know if this way is exactly fast, but it's an awesome way of doing it. And if you'll stick with me through the rest of this video, I'll show you how to get some good honey with new Minecraft 1.15 update with bees. Stay tuned. Okay, everybody, so what I've got right here is a setup where I've got bees and beehives, and it's automated. So we've got a system now, or if we'll go down here, we can go ahead and grab honey bottles and honeycomb, depending on how you want to do it. The same setup applies for both. So what's really cool about it is on here, you can see we've got shears. Here we've got shears. And then over here, in the rest of the places, we've got bottles. So you can go ahead and put them in your barrels, you can put them in your hoppers, you can put them in the dispensers. It's actually very customizable. And what's great about it is all the bees in here are just working happily, happily and producing tons and tons of stuff for us. And we don't even have to do anything except be here. So it's very AFK, it's really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you not only how to build this, but also a method of breeding bees, which is simple. It's not 100% foolproof, but it's pretty, pretty close. And also, why am I building this in the nether? And why am I on the ceiling of the nether? And how does that work? And that's a whole nether 1.15 thing that we'll get into. So let's go ahead and go back to the overworld and I'll show you some things that you need to know about breeding bees. Also, teleporting between the nether and the overworld is a lot faster than it used to be. So if you've uh, seen some of my streams before, you've seen me use this circuit to uh, deal with the bees. But I was thinking about it and I wanted to get something that was a lot more digital circuit. So I've got to explain, oh, hello, wandering trader. Um, we may kill him with lava later, we'll have to see. Uh, but a couple of things that I wanted to point out about this before we actually get into the build is why and how a lot of this works and then also how to get into breeding some bees because you're gonna need a lot of them. So let's take a look at what a full honeycomb or honeycomb, uh, honey beehive does when it's full of honey. So when you come out the back side of it with a comparator, and you can either put the comparator directly off the block or you can put it off of the stone block, what you end up with is a string of, of redstone giving you your signal strength going out to five. So when it's full of honey, it gives an output of five and you get it from your comparator. And you can clearly see that on the sixth one, it's not lit up, but on the fifth one it is. Okay, so that's how you know if you've got that. And you may be asking, what is the point of this carpet? Well, the point of the carpet is to keep the bees inside. <laughs> so you can use a lot of things to block them inside, but they come out this front face right here. And you can put a solid block, you can put a half slab. There's a few things that you can use, but a carpet is really good for reasons I'll explain later. And uh, what I figured out on how to build this the right way. Um, because if you look at grass paths, and we'll get a slab just, just because, because we're going to be use, utilizing grass paths. So if you put carpet down on a grass path, it doesn't do anything. It's still a grass path. If you put a slab down, it turns back into dirt. So that's the biggest reason that we're using the carpet, is so that we don't have to go and re-stamp down you know, dirt or wait for it to turn into grass. Okay? So, oh, I'm glad it's becoming nice. So these, these are actually a lot easier to see. So what I've done here, so that you can kind of see what's going on, is I've put a stack of blocks into the furnace. Now, a full stack will give it a signal strength of five, which is very similar, well, which is similar, it's exactly the same as this honey uh, beehive. So if I take some of these out, you can see that it doesn't uh, hit five anymore. And the reason that this is working is over here, this furnace is sending out a signal strength of five as well. So when it puts that signal strength of five with with the side of this comparator, it then tells, you know, it then finds out, hey, do, do the signals match? And if they do, then it'll allow that signal to go through and thus it activates the uh, piston, uh, like so. There you go. So when you put that in there, meaning it's a full hive, it will activate and then you can have it activate whatever you want on the end of it, which is exactly what we've got going on here. When this is full of honey inside, it goes ahead and activates the circuit, which activates this dispenser, and then that's how we end up with uh, honey bottles and honeycomb coming out, okay? But we can do better. So if you'll remember, a long time ago, we did a combination lock on uh, a server world that we had, multiplayer world. And this is pretty much the way that I had it set up, just this bottom part right here, okay? So the way it would work is 
uh, this is obviously one, it's not lit up. Go to two, it lights up because that's the combination. You go to three or four and nothing's gonna happen because it's still, that's not the correct combination. The correct combination is two, okay? Well, this is rigged to go to five right now, okay? Just, just to give an example of what would happen if you had it set for five. So we go to five and that lights up and then anything above five is also going to light up. So six, seven, eight, and then one again. Okay. And that works by obviously sending the signal up here, it jumps up on the slab and then comes back through the um, repeater and gives this a full signal strength of 15. And there you go. And that's kind of where we're going with this. But why do we have to do that when we can just come out and go straight to five? So that would be one, two, three, four, and five. So when it hits the signal strength of five, it lights up. When it's not, so this is half of it, so one, two, three, right? So then we'll put some more in there. So that gets me up to four, and then we'll put the rest of it in there, and that gets me up to the full five. So you can see that if we have a block right here, then we can activate that as a five, which is what I've done on this side. So this is exactly this same circuit, but with obviously cheaper resources because you don't need a furnace. You only need one comparator and you don't need the sticky piston with the redstone block. This is just the comparator with some redstone and it's a digital signal. So this will actually work really well for you if this is what you're looking for, but either method will work. I happen to really enjoy this circuit because it makes that sound when it does it. Whereas this doesn't make any sound but a little click. <laughs> so I guess it depends on what you want. So that's what we've got going on in here. The other thing you're going to have to learn how to build is we're going to learn how to build this little airlock, if you will. We'll call it a B-lock. Okay. And the way this works is, let's get this out. So you're going to go ahead and break this. And then when you come in here, like if you're, if you're, normally it would be like this. So you would come in here, then you'd block yourself back in. Now you do this and you can go in and deal with your bees. And then if any of them happen to come in while you're in here, what's cool about bees is they have a really large collider and you can push them out as you're going in here and you can just block it back off. And then you can get out through your neat little airlock. Okay, so that's, that's what we're gonna build for our way of getting in and out uh, of our bee area right here, see? So, uh, let me show you what the actual bees awake. Let's go ahead and make it daytime. So, you go ahead and there we go. So now the bees are all awake, everybody's outside. And we can go ahead and come in here. We'll go ahead and block ourselves in. Got our glass ready, boom, boom. And now I can come in here and hang out with my bees and do whatever I need to do. And then when I'm done, I can just come right back up and let's get a bee in here just because it's fun. So now you see how I, I tried to keep them in there and I can't because my collider and his collider doesn't fit in here. So uh, once you're in here, you can push them out and then you can just fill that back up. Boom, boom, there you go. And you're all set, okay? Um, I think I had it right there. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Point is, is that's how you do, okay? So you get a whole bunch of shears, a whole bunch of bottles, and you just let it go to town. And then while you are AFK, you go ahead and get some stuff. And so that's not a lot in here because that's only just one pot of it. Uh, the rest of that over there was a couple hours of letting it go with a lot of pods. And I'll show you how to make all those. So let's do this next. So now that we understand sort of the dynamics of how we're gonna build this, Let's look at how we get the bees. And this is a bee breeder right here, okay? So what we're gonna do is, and I haven't figured out 100% if this is necessary to open this or close it. Um, we're gonna leave it closed right now just so you guys can see what it does. But bees love to path to these um, trap doors for some reason, even if it doesn't go anywhere, they just love pathing to doors. Also, they path to flowers to try to pollinate them. So these bees up here really would love to get down there to go do some pollination, but they can't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crouch because it helps to hit these a little bit better. Their colliders are big, but they're hard to hit. So you've kind of got to get them going while you're doing this. And then you get them all set up and that should be enough. So now I've got an empty 
uh, beehive down here, okay, that they should want to go into, which it looks like he's having trouble, so we'll open that. And they may have to pollinate first. Here, let's see. Oh, I had that flower in my hand, that's why. They will always try to find your flower. So now they will go ahead and do their little pollination dance. We'll see if they can get in there. Did I get three? I don't think I did. Let's try to get another one in here. Um, oh, I must have gotten all three. Oh, okay, no, I didn't. All right, because it's all the hearts. Let's try the other side. Um, you have to have it like this, though, because these are really easy... It's really easy for the bees to get out, the, the, the baby bees. So you've got to do it. There we go. Got it. All right. I was trying to get that one. All right. So now all the baby bees should go down here. There we go. So now the baby bees are down there. We'll open this up and see if they need that to go in. I don't think they do. So I kind of want to leave it closed and see what they do. I just don't want them to go up there thinking that they can go into those hives. Because I, I want them to go into this hive right here. There we go. So those two just went in here, and that one just went in here. So now this one has three bees in it, and it's it's full with three bees. In order to break this, you need Silk Touch, which I have here, Silk Touch. So you're going to have to go get yourself like a Silky Sam or somebody and, you know, zombie them up until you get all the trades all the way down, and then you can go ahead and get your Silk Touch this way, okay? So this is Silky Sam, Silk Touch, and Stuff Emporium. So uh, this is how you can get it. It's real easy nowadays with the um, with the villager trades. And then once you've got your silk touch, so just so you know, this this is a two here. When I break this, I'll get um, I'll get a um, another one of these. So I'm gonna try to block this off so you see it pop in my inventory. There it goes. All right, and this one has three little bees in it. Okay, so now. You want to make sure that when you're doing this, you have some smoke under here because the bees will get angry at you. So just so you know. <laughs> All right. Um, once you're done that, you can go ahead and replace that with another one and then wait for these bees to have their cooldown, And then you'll go ahead and be able to breed again. So we'll show you that in a little bit. Um, needless to say, you grab your carpet here put this down we'll go ahead and get rid of both of these because I don't need those anymore and then um, when the bees are ready to come out you can break this carpet and they'll come out okay so if I break that right now then they're able to come out but they're not ready they need to be in there for a little while so we'll let them do their thing while we go ahead and do this so this bee breeder now that you know how to use it um, you can decide if you want to watch this section of it to go ahead and see how to build it okay so building it is pretty easy, okay? Uh, we'll just build another one right here. Okay, but the key important things that you're gonna have to have is you're gonna have to have some kind of block, some kind of fence, uh, and some, I like the cobblestone wall also, uh, but you'll need a, a piece of fence too. So you'll need two different things. You'll need a fence and a wall, okay? Some sort of lighting block would be helpful. Uh, some glass, you're going to need that. And then you'll need some um, uh, hoppers. You'll need the flower that you want to use. And you'll need some beehives. Okay. The uh, the trap door and the, uh, the lever are just to help it so that the bees can get to where they need to go. All right. So let's see if these bees are ready to come out. I'll kill them if they do. Yep. There they go. So you see how the, the beehive here was uh, basically, you know, blocked for them while the, uh, here, let's get rid of that. I don't want a whole bunch of bees flying around so you guys don't think that bees are escaping everywhere. They will try to continue to get near that flower. So there we go. Got it. Okay. So that way you don't think bees are escaping or anything. So can the baby bees get out here? Yes, they can. So that's why you got to be careful with that. And it's got to be down there. Okay. So let's do this real quick. Boom, 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 right? Um, well, you want to be able to see that, so. Um, 
because, well, I want to be able to see it. You may not want to, but yeah, it is what it is. All right. Okay. Um, flower. Oh, yeah, I already had you. There we go. So now we need... If you want to do the fire, break two blocks, go down. Put your campfire right there. And then put a block, uh, like a half slab over that. That's what I do. I just put the half slab over it. And then now I know for sure that the, the smoke can get up through the block. Okay. Um, put a temporary block right here. Because this is where your beehive is going to go. And then grab your uh, trap door. Put that down. And then you can get a lever over here like that and then just leave it like that so that it'll go ahead and do that you don't need that block anymore and you don't need the lever anymore okay so now what we've got to do is build up around the sides here so that the bees do not get out get out so we get that and that and depending on how you want to do it um, if you want glass around the whole thing that's up to you um, you know it it's a matter of preference, you know, whatever you, you want to do with it. Um, grab some kind of light source. It doesn't have to be glowstone. You can use, um, you know, like prismarine or some other glowing block. Uh, but you do need a fence post right here. This is how the bees, well, two fence posts. That's how the bees are going to get up and down, or uh, not up and down, but um, uh, that's how they're going to get down from the adult bees, okay? because they have to be able to go down from here where the breeding area is down into the bottom here. And the only way to do that is uh, through there. Okay. <clears throat> so now you've got your entire encasement where the baby bees are gonna go. Um, and it has to kind of be like this because they're gonna go search out that flower. And then you wanna make sure you have an empty beehive, an empty one already down here. We're done with that, and we're done with that. Put an empty beehive here, so now it's ready to go. Okay, I don't want that anymore. Because then I'll get confuzzled. All right, build this up a little bit more, and then what you're gonna do is build that across, build that across, and again, it depends on what you want, like that. And then if you want more glass in here so you can see them, I suggest it. Um, but again, if you're short on glass, you don't have to. All right, so that will allow you to see everything that's going on in there. Okay, now um, you don't actually need glass right here or right here, okay? Because uh, you're going to put beehives there. So you can grab a piece of carpet right there. Uh, not there. There. Losing my mind. Um, yeah, that's right. Two pieces, yeah, that's right. Two pieces of carpet right there and right there. There you go. The next thing you want to do is carpet there and there, and then there and there with your hoppers. The hoppers have to be facing down into that carpet. Um, and then you can get rid of those two carpets. And if you want to retrieve them, you can go down here and go retrieve them. That's up to you. Um, but you need this to be just like it is um, so that when you put the beehives down, then they're blocked in and they come out only when you want them to come out. Because if you put one down and they start popping out, then they're going to come out this way. Okay. So the reason the hoppers are facing down is that the big bees, the adult bees can't leave. The baby bees can. So make sure that when you put your uh, beehives down, that the beehives you use are adult bees that they're full of adult bees so these beehives that i have right here have three adult bees in them and that's what these two are right here okay just so that you know so the where do you find bees well that's a different tutorial <laughs> but you can find them in different biomes usually the plains forest um flower forest is a good place to look and then you can find the the actual honeycomb uh, blocks these things the bees nest you can find those up in the bottom of the the uh, tops of the trees okay so we're gonna put one of these here 
and then you're going to put one there. Okay. Um, now, just so you can see how quick these come out, I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, daytime. And then you're going to go ahead and see these guys pop out pretty quick. So when they're ready to come out, they come out. Right. So now I need to very carefully get there. Okay. So now what's going on is these bees are just chilling okay they're they're ready to breed they're ready to go but they're just chilling right now okay so i can come over here and oh, like i said open this up and then come over here with my flower and start making the bees make little bees and that should be all of them haha <laughs> bee all of them and then what you can do is, let's say um, you've got hoppers up here. You can go ahead and store some flowers up here. If you don't know how to make more of these flowers, the reason I'm using lilacs is they're a two-block a two tall flower. And two-block tall flowers are awesome because you can take bone meal to them and make more. See? Make lots more. So there you go. And they, uh, the bees will go to it. So you see there's three of the baby bees now. And they'll go down to the flower because they want to get the pollen right away. And then they will go to here because they see that it's an empty hive. There, there they go. They're, uh, they're going. Oh, he's having trouble. Here, let's try that. Yep. Um, come on, you can go in. Okay, there it goes. Oh, one thing I forgot to do. Surprised you guys didn't didn't call me out on that. There we go. Carpet. You gotta have the carpet in the front. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll just come straight back out. Don't forget about that. Don't forget about your carpet. <laughs> so now that they're, you know, these have bred, so they're on a cooldown now. I think they have like a four-minute cooldown timer, something like that. Then these bees are now ready to go. So you can go ahead and break them and now start using them for your uh, bee honey maker. Now the cool thing is about the honey makers, it, the honey farms, it doesn't matter if the bees are adult or baby bees. They still gather pollen the same way. They still make uh, honey and comb the same rate. So it doesn't matter. So you just grab that and that is your baby bees. Okay, so there you go. And then we'll go ahead and throw that back there so that when these are ready to breed again, we can make more bees. So you'll notice we're only doing six at a time. If you if you do more than that, it's very, very difficult to uh, get all the different collisions to happen uh, where the bees are spread out like they are right now. Um, and also, once again, I do recommend that you do this in the overworld, not in the nether or in the end, because the bees in the overworld will go back into their hives every day and they can get really bunched up and confused and moved around but when they go back in their hive and pop back out they come back out in about the same configuration every time so it makes it a lot easier to breed them so you can see how these guys are all over the place going crazy this can make it more difficult depending on where they are because you may not be able to get to all the different bees all right um but yeah that that is bee breeding in a nutshell and so yeah pretty easy to do okay next we will get on to the building of this big thing um before and i'll say big thing we'll go into the nether and i'll show it to you so this one is producing all this business and you just heard it click again so now these these all of this extra stuff that's on here that makes it look like a bee that that's not necessary all right, that's just me being silly and designing. And then to get in, it's the same. It's this thing right here. So pretty easy to get in and out of. Um, but you can see the little thing is just popping out. So that'll tell you how it works. So they're always going in and out, in and out, in and out. And a um, couple of reasons why they're not packed in, you know, like all of the beehives are right next to each other is because the, the bees need to spread out a little bit 
when they're when they're going for the flowers and they try to bunch up and do all these things. So you could potentially end up with like all the bees over on one side of your farm and they're all trying to get all of these flowers over here and then they get confused and they get stuck and they don't even know that there's an empty hive over here on this side. So you want to try to keep them spread out a little bit. So they're not by any stretch, you know, blocked off. You know, they can go freely to any side that they want. But you do want to try to keep them in one little area. Now, what's great about doing this in the nether, so now that you can look at it, is there's no day-night cycle in the nether. So for these ones, they will never go back in their hive as a group and come out as a group. So what will happen is they can kind of rotate and cycle through. So as they're going in and out and in and out and in and out, you actually end up with a more consistent drop rate of your uh, honey and your honeycomb. But what it also does for you is it, it allows them to not be all bunched up together all at the same time. Because right now, you got to figure, in each one of these hives, there are three bees assigned. So there's, um, there's what is that? That's uh, eight on one, uh, on one side and eight on the other. So that's 16. What would that be times three is... 48 or something sure so there would be like f almost 50 bees in here getting all crowded and, and bunched up together so you don't want to have them all on one side of the farm or on the other side of the farm so that's why um, so we're gonna go ahead and build this and then we will go ahead and uh, well let's pick a spot over here okay so we're gonna build this thing I, I was thinking about maybe right next to it over here so uh, it's everything starts by placing your chest or whatever kind of inventory system you're you're going to use, um, you know, or uh, loot system, whatever it is you're going to do. Um, so just keep that in mind uh, that you want to have your chest like this here. Um, you can have them off to the side, off to the whatever. It does not matter. Whatever inventory slash loot collection system you want to use, um, you know, it'll be fine so just keep that in mind build your inventory and sorting system first and then build the actual uh unit okay so this is going to be our center line so we're going to go ahead and come back uh however many you want to do so this is going to be our first set of drops so this is going to be our second did i even get that right i sure did good okay so that's uh that will make up one cell right so then we can just repeat that over and over and over again. So you go ahead and one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two. Okay. And then now you just come back here and go like this. One, two, one, two. And I'm holding, um, I'm holding crouch down so that it will place on the actual inventory of the, uh, or a place on the block of the hopper and not open the inventory of the hopper. So one, two, one, two, and one, two. Okay, so that'll get us our, our 16 that we have over there, okay? The next thing you're gonna need is some grass blocks. This is, once again, why you need a silk touch. Um, there, I guess you could use uh, a different solid block and then put like a minecart hopper underneath it um, but we're going to use the path and the, the cool thing about the path is if you see here I don't know if I can do it we'll put one there doesn't go in you put one there it goes in right see goes in okay so that's why we're using the path okay um, because with the path it will go ahead and go in so you're just going to cover these only. So these six here. So if you want to use your silk touch, uh, maybe a silk touch shovel and go get a bunch of grass. Or you could just, you know, get one piece of grass and then wait for it to crawl over. I don't recommend that in the nether. Um, I think that would be very slow. Uh, so I would do it this way. So go ahead and stamp these out. And then, because I'm silly and I always forget things, I would go ahead and add your carpet now. So carpet is going here. Don't worry, it's not going to break the path. That's the best thing about carpet. Ah! Unless you do something like that, in which case, don't do that. <laughs> okay, so now we've got that down. All right, so we're done with our carpet. We need some blocks. Whatever blocks you want to make it out of, that's fine. There. 
to there. And then you're going to need some there and on this side as well. Okay, this is where your flowers are going to go. So get those in there. Get there. Okay, so these are where your flowers are going to go. And also, they're too tall. They're two blocks tall. Because when the items get spit out of the dispensers, they have a tendency to land on one block tall systems. So that said, get some ladders. Because you're going to need to be in and out of here building this. So if you're in survival building this, you want ladders. Okay. Also, if you get stuck building this in the nether, don't leave it for very long. Because you'll get zombie pigmen, maybe even gas, maybe other things spawning up here on top of the nether. Okay. 1.15, 1, 1 it, it didn't necessarily make it easier for you to get on top of the nether. But it did make you have the ability to get your portals from on top of the nether linked with your portal in the overworld. Um, so that's a thing. And that's pretty awesome. Okay. So we're not going to put the, the flowers up just yet. They have a tendency to get in the way. Um, what we are going to do right now is put blocks here, 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 and here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so I'm just kind of showing you the bare bones of what you're going to need to get all this to work properly. Okay, so we're going to put a, a block here, here, and here, and here. And then on top of these is where you're going to put your glowstone. So you kind of want that right away. There we go. And these blocks also that we're putting down have a double purpose because you're going to put dispensers on them. So get these dispensers. And you want your dispenser down like this. Okay. Nope, not like that. Like, no, but there. Yes, that way, but there. <laughs> you can actually do it from the ground depending on how close you are. <laughs> There we go. Okay. And then we'll come over here and do the same thing. Really easy. Now, this build this build is simple, simple. And as you saw, it doesn't require a lot of redstone. So this is pretty easy. Very simple digital circuit. No problems. Only solutions. Okay, so we're done with dispensers. Get this back. So now our beehives are going to go right here facing in. Okay. So we're going to want a comparator behind all of this and then you want these blocks to also be covered so fill in all six of these behind each one of these okay there we go so do that on all of this and don't worry you can get to the front of this obviously um, from the other side okay so there we are you see how that works okay so what we're going to do also is just because we want to make sure none of the things go flying where they're not supposed to, we're going to fill in all of these gaps. Okay. So fill in all of those gaps. Now, I haven't had a lot of bad experience with things flying out to the side, but that doesn't mean that it won't happen. Okay. So it doesn't mean it won't happen. So there we go. So now you can still come in here and place your beehives when it's time to, to do that, okay? Okay, so while we're inside, while we're inside, you should, now you don't have to necessarily do this, especially if you continue to give yourself access to these uh, dispensers. If you don't wanna use hoppers here, okay? You don't wanna use hoppers. You can go ahead and do upside down stairs. That way, even with the redstone on top of here, you still have access to this dispenser. So if you're thinking about resources and you don't have a lot of resources going on, you don't have the iron, you don't have an iron farm, then go ahead and don't use the hoppers like this. Don't do the hoppers. If you don't have resources, use upside down stairs. Okay. I'm going to use hoppers. <laughs> I'm just saying if you don't have it, then don't, don't think you have to have it. You just have to make sure that you use an upside down stair so you have access to your... Um, uh, to your dispenser, okay? So there, 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 and there. Okay, now if that also is how you want to end it, you're like, well, I don't want to put barrels or whatever on top of these. That's also your prerogative. You can do whatever you want with it. 
Um, I am going to show you the full Monty with barrels like, it, you know, like it is over there. Um, but again, you don't have to. It might help if I had this going down. Uh, why? There. Okay. I just like the, the way the barrels look when they're facing up like this. Because on the side, they look like an actual barrel. So, like, when you open it, you see it looks like an actual barrel. So, that's pretty cool. Um, okay. So, now, all of that inventory business is taken care of. So, all this stuff, we're getting there. We're almost done. So, now you have to decide, do you want glass on this side or do you want stone? Um, or some other, you know, block. If you want glass, great. Um, put your glass there. If you want to block it off with stone or something, it doesn't matter. It's not required to be glass. Um, it could be stone and that would be fine. It's totally up to you how you want to design your own structures. Okay, I will put glass here just because it's fun. Okay. Now, while you're here, while you're here, go ahead and if you use stone or some other non-transparent block, then you don't have to put carpet on it. But just for the sake of consistency, we'll put carpet on the whole thing and not there. All right. You don't have to use carpet. You can use some other type of slab or, you know, something that prevents spawning. You just don't want things spawning up here, okay? And then we'll, we'll I'll explain why you don't have to worry about this stuff here in a minute for the, um, um, for the, uh, why the spawning doesn't happen, okay? So for here, we're going to need this for the comparator, okay? So we're just going to do this a little bit at a time so that we don't lose everybody here because I don't want to... I think it's easier to do one or two simple steps than building a whole bunch of stuff all at once. Okay, so we don't need the ladders anymore. We'll put those over here. All right, so comparators facing out just like this. Okay, told you this was an easy build. All right, go over here, comparators facing out. Not there. <laughs> Not there either. <laughs> there we go. All right, comparators facing out. And then you just go ahead and build up like this. Actually, that's not what you do. Excuse me. There we go. Sorry. Build out two and then up. You go out two and then up, two and then up, two and then up. On this side, same thing. Go out two and then up. Go out two and then up. Go out two and then up. Out two and up. Okay. All right, let's get a little bit of redstone going on like this. Go up here. All right, do the other side. All right, almost there. Okay. Now, now that you've gotten all this, we can go ahead and cover it because, it, you know, I didn't want you to try to have to place redstone on something that you can't see. So put one more block on each one of these, and then we're gonna be pulling out our half slabs here in a second. All right, go ahead and get your half slab. You're gonna put it on the upper side, the upper side, it's very important. If you put it on the lower side, it, it won't uh, work because you can't place redstone on this, okay? So it must be the upper side, okay? So do that on the whole thing, upper. Then you're gonna put redstone over everything, just cover it. Just cover the redstone. I'll explain why that works too. So there's a couple of things that I still got to explain to you why it all works. But you're going to see this is really nice. Okay. Because you're like, wait, won't that trigger the other one? Nope. Because of five. Signal strength of five. Okay. Now, while we're thinking about it, while we're thinking about it, why, you, you need to figure out, because once you start activating this, you're not going to remember this. Okay, so you can go ahead and fill your barrels with it, but I start with the dispensers. Grab your glass bottles, fill up your dispensers with your glass bottles. If you want to use uh, shears, then grab your shears and do it that way. Why can't I find shears? Actually, that's fine. So if you want to do shears, you come over here and do shears. Um, like I said, you don't have to have all this inventory filled up with everything. It's more for those that want a fire and forget system because it's going to take hours to get through all that inventory. Okay. It's going to take hours. So don't worry about that. 
In fact, I think it would take hours to get through just the dispenser inventory as well and the durability of the shears. So you would not have a problem with this, okay? All right, so th there we go. So you're gonna grab these right here and just fill everything in. And the reason you need to fill all the slots of the dispenser is that it randomly picks from the inventory slots. Um, and that's also why I would have the hoppers because then it will fill those in as well as it empties. And then all you have to do is fill the hoppers, okay? Uh, but you don't have to do it that way. You know, you have options, you have, you have uh, choices. So uh, I'll leave that up to you how you wanna do that, okay? You have choices. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is fill in the glass over here. So go ahead and pick the spot where you'd like to go ahead and fill it in right here. And then you're gonna go ahead and bring that across the top, okay? Just like this. Pretty easy, not a problem. Just be aware as you get to the end, we have to build our B lock or our air lock, okay? So the way this is gonna work is however you really want to work it, but I recommend using some kind of non-spawnable block or you know, you'll have to cover it at some point, okay? Um, and then what you can do is if you want, uh, like what I do, is we know that this would be glass anyway. Oh, not there, right here. Okay, so we know that would be glass anyway because that's how it is over on this side, right? Okay, so what you need to do is build up a little area here that you can stand. Okay, so you would stand here, it gets blocked here, and you enter here like that. Okay, so that should tell you how you put this together. All right, so there and... There we go. That will keep things from spawning on it, okay? If you wanna go ahead and do it like this, oops, like this, that's fine too. I let you do your artistic business however you want. I only recommend that you use something that they can't spawn on here, like glass, because, or you know, leaf blocks, whatever you want. Point is, is so that they can't get, uh, zombie pigment doesn't spawn in here and get to your bees, um, or anything else spawn in there and get to your bees, okay? Um, you can put a glass here if you want, or uh, use a slab. I mean, it's entirely up to you. If you want it to look nice and easy and simple like that, you can do it like that, okay? So there we go, and have yourself a little thing you can stand on, okay? So now we don't actually need that right this second. All right, I would put the flowers in last, okay? So now we just double check, make sure we haven't forgotten anything. So all the circuits are set up. We've got inventory and all the dispensers, okay? All the circuits are ready to go. Everything is sealed off because once you start putting bees in here, they're gonna come out. <laughs> all right, so just keep that in mind. Once you put bees in here, they're gonna start coming out. All right, so um, go ahead and there, close that off. And now, and actually, your bees could potentially get out here if you have baby bees. So if you're worried about that, then do little doors here, like, oops, like that. And if you're worried about your baby bees getting out here, go ahead and do that. And then they won't come out, okay? So if you're concerned about it, I mean, I'll show you it still works either way. Oh, I don't know why that wanted to place there. There we go. <laughs> that one is funny. All right, and then there we go. And there we go. Okay, so it'll still work either way. All right, let's go ahead and get our beehives put away. All right. All 
And then we'll put that in there. There and there. Okay. So now let's go ahead and put our flowers and break the carpet as we go out. Okay. So we'll put that in and then break your carpet. Be very careful you don't hit your bees because they'll get mad. Okay. Oh, there we go. And they're gonna want to. <laughs> they're gonna want to follow you because you got you got flowers. And actually, you know what? Last time I did this, they weren't following me around nearly as much. So let's go ahead and do it like this. Oh, I'm creating bees. <laughs> if you do, that's fine. This will just show that the bees can still um, stop that. There we go. The, the baby bees will still work for you. Okay. So that's fine. There, there, and there. Okay, cool. All right, so let's get off of that, and we'll get some more of them back over here. Come on, guys. Come on, bees. Get all the bees back over here. Hey, you. Hey, you. Come here. <laughs> all right. Because they can't get into the other ones anyway. So once they start doing that, and be very careful. You don't want to hit your bees. Take good care of your bees. Oh, and I just hit a bee. <laughs> I think if I was not uncreative, they'd probably swarm me at this point. And you don't want to do that. Oh, there it goes again. Oh, there's another one. I'm so mean. So evil. All right. So this is what I was talking about. So the, the bees can try to come out with you. Um, but, you know, they, they can't make it. So you just push, push, push. So like you see, they can't share the same collider with you. So you just push them out. And then... Oh, you need to go back out. Like that. There we go. All right. And now they're all set. They're all ready to go. We even got a couple of extra bees in there. So that's good. And you can see them. You can already hear them start going in. Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> and there they go. Bloop, 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 bloop. And that's it. It's pretty easy. This is a lot of fun. I really enjoy making these. And then what will happen is as they start filling it up with honey, you'll start getting outputs and it'll come up. So why does this work that you don't have to worry about your signal overlapping? Well, because it's going to redstone works linear, so it, it doesn't work absolute. So when you get an output here, you know, it'd be one, two, three, four, and then five. Well, the thing about this being five is that this four here is not going to output over here because it would need to be a five to go here. So if you have a five strength here, you would have a five strength here because you have a four strength here. You see what I mean? So it, it goes on that far, but it's not a six strength, so it won't go here. So when you see it, you'll see it as it, they start to come back in and out. And, and now you actually start to see them uh, sort of evening out, which is really awesome because you won't see that in the overworld. You'll see it in the nether, but not the overworld. Also, if they start getting stuck, bees can be lassoed. So you can always go in there and say, oh, you know what? You can't find a, a home, so I'll help you find a home. But they will eventually work it out. Just, you know, give them a little bit of time. They'll figure it out. You see how they're moving. They're doing their thing. So they're, 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 getting, it to, they're getting it to happen. They know what's up. Yeah, they, they will path correctly. Just give them a little bit of time. All right, so then there we go. So now you can see as they left, they've got a four strength here, okay? So because you've got your three here, then it would go to four there. So four and four. So that doesn't mean that this one is already up to a three strength. It just means that the one that's furthest ahead right here is the four strength one here. Okay, and same thing over here. So that would be one, two, three, okay? And then over here, it's the same business going on, right? So the strengths are increasing as it goes. So like I said, you don't necessarily have to have the trap doors in there, um, but the little baby bees can try to get out. Um, if you have extra bees in there, more than the three per hive, they're gonna get kind of confused and they're gonna try to wander around and find a, a hive. And then what that does is it means that the ones that were normally assigned to that hive can't find the hive again, right, that they were at. So now they've gotta go somewhere else. So it may not be a good idea to have more than three per hive. Um, 
as I had thought before because they can rotate around. But after watching them for hours and hours and hours and trying to figure out their little AI pathings, what I realized is just having the three per hive works really well and uh, it makes life a lot easier for you. Um, because you'll, you'll get, I think you get a higher yielding product by doing that. And then of course, again, because we're in the nether, um, you don't have the day-night cycle, so they'll always be out and working for you as long as you're in the nether. Oh, we just heard a click. So something already came out over here somewhere. So let's go check and see. So we already got a honey bottle. Our first one, yay. Yeah, it takes a, it takes a little while to get it going, but once it does, you'll get honey bottles and honeycomb pretty regularly. Um, now, why would you not want to expand this? You could. You could expand this very, very far, depending on your resources. You could come out here and do another 16 if you wanted to. Um, the bees do have a tendency to group, and these uh, dividers have a way of keeping them separated, so it might work for you. If it does work for you, great. Try it and see. My experience was, though, that the larger these get, the longer they get, the less they work. Um, because you start having those bees flying around and getting lost and doing all the things that bees, you know, shouldn't do. Okay, um, so let's see what we've got already. Besides, I mean, honestly, you know, that's right away. That's just a few minutes. This is a few hours right here. I mean, you saw where it was when we started, and all we've done is build another one of these. So we've got two of these right here, you know, right next to each other offline. That's going to really bother me later. But, um, yeah, you get the idea. So, yeah, I mean, it's coming in pretty quick. And then, as you notice, as they get kicked out, they, they spit them right back out onto those uh, paths, and you're good to go. So... Yeah, I mean, it, it depends. If you want to make it bigger, absolutely go for it. Um, you can't really build this awesome bee design around it, though, if you do that. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> so uh, some key things to keep in mind when you're decorating this. Um, whatever you do, don't do that. It shuts it off. All right. Um, so don't do that. Uh, it, won't, it won't work. So you do this and you put blocks on it. It uh, blocks the signal so that it doesn't work. Okay, so don't don't put things there. It doesn't look like it blocks the signal, but it does. If you see right here, you can tell the graphic dis difference. That is blocking that signal. Okay, so be careful when you're decorating it. So don't don't cover it. Do it like that. Okay, so have it have it stand off one block off, whatever you're gonna do. Okay, all right. Um, the other thing, just make sure that if you're going to have little baby bees in there, you know, put the little trap doors on the outside. Um, if you don't want the trap doors in there anymore, um, you can always come in here, use your bee lock and, uh, you know, go in there and go get rid of them. So that's totally up to you if you want to do that. Um, I don't mind them in there. I, I don't like them for this design because it was just all adult bees, but yeah, you know, whatever it is, what it is. They, they like to path to the doors anyway, but when they're there, I think their primary focus is to do flowers and then hive. Uh, if you don't like the ladders, you can go get rid of those. Um, they're only necessary for when you're building it or maintenance of the facility, if you will. So there you go. Um, but yeah, uh, nether, build it in the nether, you get a lot of stuff, okay? Um, all right, so let's go back in here. So what happens if you build it in here? Well, at night, as you can see, they all go to sleep. <laughs> these these ones are just confused. They'll go to sleep. There they go. See? And then these ones, as soon as they figure out what's going on, they'll go to sleep as well. Any second now. Um, okay, they're just confused. <laughs> but in any case, they'll, they'll go to sleep at some point. Oh, yeah, there they go. Okay, like I said, they were confused. They'll figure it out. All right. So that, that's a thing. That'll happen. Um, but yeah, that's that's one reason to do it that way. Could you build it in the end? Sure, there's no day-night cycle in the end. But you don't really have access to the end right away in a lot of games. So And because they made it easier for you to do the nether. Also, another reason, I almost forgot, is that bees are, are passive mobs, right? That's why I've got the game on Peaceful right now. So they're passive mobs. They don't they don't count against the hostile mob spawn count. So what I did up here 
is I was testing out an idea to do like a, a gold, uh, like a zombie gold farm type of thing where, you know, like maybe you'd stand down at the bottom, have the gold farm up above you, and then they fall down and you kill them, that sort of thing, 20 some odd blocks. Um, and it, I was still getting zombie pigmen to spawn up there and I took the platform down. Um, but, you know, and they were still doing their happy business here. So keep that in mind. That's a thing. So I would recommend Nether, um, again, day-night cycle, so it's always running in two, so that while you're AFKing here, you can AFK for like a gold farm or something. Okay? So if you have any questions or concerns about it, let me know. Um, it's really easy to build. The circuit is really simple. So I don't think you'll have any issues with the redstone. The hardest thing is breeding enough bees to put in this thing. And because you still have the ability to come and go as you please, um, I don't think you're going to have that huge of an issue with it. Um, I would only say that if you're not filling the whole thing with hives right away, uh, put some temporary blocks where those go so that things don't get wonky and bees don't get stuck where bees don't go. Okay, so uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys like it. I hope that it, it um, you know, is something that you can all use. And until the next episode, thank you so much for watching. Peace.